Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to share with you a CSS property that you may not have been using enough or you've probably never heard of and that is the CSS over scroll behavior property. I'm not going to bother giving you a textbook definition of what the over scroll behavior property is. I'm just going to demonstrate it because it's better for you to see what it is and what it does. So I have a page here with a sidebar that overlaps the content. And you can see that it overlaps the content when I scroll. You can see that the background color is behind this sidebar. So um, even if I place my cursor here, you can see that it still scrolls because it overlaps the content. But we also have a drop down that has a scrolling within it. Now watch what is going to happen when I scroll to the end. So as I scroll to the end and I continue to scroll, you can see that the page scrolls. Now that is an unintended event because I did not want to scroll the page. I was simply trying to scroll to see if there was more here to scroll. And even in the opposite direction, it behaves the same way. Now this makes for a poor user experience because the user may not have intended to scroll the page. But there is an unintended scrolling as you get to the end of the, you know, this container and the scroll transfers. Now this is known as scroll chaining. That is when the over scrolling of the container has transferred to the parent. That's why the body scrolls when we get to the end. So how do we avoid it? Because there's sometimes we don't want this to happen. So how are we going to stop it from happening? And that is where the over scroll behavior property comes in. Now, if I go ahead and turn on the over scroll behavior and set it to contain, then watch what is going to happen. If I scroll to the end, I'm going to continue scrolling and you can see that now I'm scrolling, I'm turning my scroll, scroll wheel right now on the mouse and nothing is happening. It's not scrolling the body, okay, because I'm within this panel and the panel contains the scrolling behavior and doesn't allow it to transfer to the parent. And that is what we are looking at today. So I have here two divs. Uh, by default, they behave the same. For example, if I come to the end of this and I continue to scroll, you see it scrolls. And if I come, go to the beginning and I continue to scroll, you can see that you know, the page scrolls a bit. The same with this, okay? Now, what if I want this to stop scrolling or the scroll chaining not to transfer to the body? I'll simply come to this. Now, this is the over scroll behavior contain, and I have a class on it called over scroll contain. And I'm simply going to activate this. And that, when I scroll to the end, you see, no matter how much I scroll, it doesn't move away because you want to limit the over scrolling event to that container only. So there are a lot of use cases where this might come in very handy and it makes for a good user experience. For example, what I just showed you here, for example, you, you want to scroll to the end of this and then you don't have the page scroll unintended. When you want the page to scroll, you just come out and scroll, even though, yeah, the page still scroll when we are on top of this. And I'm going to show you a little trick on how to even stop that from happening if you don't want it to scroll when you are on top of this panel, even though it overlaps. Uh, over scroll behavior will not take care of that. Just a little trick. I'm going to show you. So stay till the end of the video. The over scroll behavior has uh, a couple of values. Uh, we are dealing with content. We can say none, but the difference between none and content is in what is called the over scroll affordance. Now the over scroll affordance is not something you can witness or you could experience on a desktop. Sometimes on a mobile device, when you scroll to the bottom of the page and you continue to scroll, you could see that there is uh, the page want to continue to scroll. So basically the over scroll affordance is when you attempt to scroll beyond the boundary of the page you get that visual feedback that you have reached the end. For example, in mobile devices, when you scroll to the very bottom and then you continue to scroll, you'll see that it scrolls up, it moves up a little bit, but it doesn't scroll, it just, the page moves up. That is what is called the overscroll affordance. When you change the overscroll behavior property to none, it disables the affordance. It may not be compatible with all the mobile browsers. For example, in iOS, you can only turn that, uh, the affordance off with CSS from iOS 16 and above, if you're using below 16, this might not have effect. But if you use just contain, you're only disabling the over scroll chaining, but the affordance will still be there. And one more thing before we leave, I promise you, if you stay to the end of this video, I'm going to give you a hack on how to stop the body from scrolling if you are on that sidebar panel. So, so this is going to be like a hack. 
you're going to use this with caution because we're going to use a CSS uh, feature has. So now, right now, when we hover on this sidebar, you can see that we can still scroll the body because it's overlapping. What if we didn't want to scroll it when we hover? So we could just say body. Now, this sidebar is a header. So I'm going to say body has header over. So if we are hovering, if the body has a header that is being hovered on, then we want to apply the overflow hidden to it. So when we hover, hover on the header, because the body has a header that is being hovered, we can scroll again. Now, if you want to prevent this shift, of course, the reason this you have this shift here is because this the scroll bar is hidden. So you might want to offset that by an equal uh, right pixel for the scroll bar. Uh, so it's usually 17 pixels on Windows anyway. So that might change for a Mac device. So I'm going to say uh, padding block end. That should be 17 pixel. No, it's in line. Sorry, in line is left to right. So. So you can see that it basically just changes that the color. The scroll bar is exactly 17 pixels, so you don't have the page shifting. So that is just a hack, but I, like I said, use it with caution because there are just a few browsers that doesn't support has, but then nothing could go wrong, right? If it doesn't support it, it's just gonna work as, you know, it is working by default. It's just nothing is gonna break. So if you wanna use that, you know, so when you are here, you don't scroll, but when you come out, you scroll. So that's just a tip you could apply to maybe any other thing. And by the way, check out some t-shirt designs below there in the Design with Cracker store. If you like any of them, just get one for yourself. And don't forget to hit like if you learned something from the video. Until next time, do have a great day. Bye.